Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Today in History and we're going to be going back, I'm going to be going back to the year 1953. And it's in interesting, um, you know, sharing uh, this particular event in history because of what we're currently, what we just spoke about on the... Um, of the press, press, and that is the southern governors and northern governors, you know, that little friction here and there with um, agreeing on a particular ideology or a particular direction. Um, it was one of, you know, a similar, you know, occurrence that happened, you know, in 1953, and it was in a couple of years in the build up to that era, um, 1953, that all these things happened. It, um, there was a strained relationship that started in 1953 with a motion for self government in Nigeria. In 1956, it was tabled in the House of Representatives by a member of the Action Group, Chief Anthony Enahoro. But at that time, the Northern governors did not accept the motion. Um, and it, it created a lot of, um, you know, conflict, um, a lot of, um, um, you know, arguments basically across the country, not just in the House of Assembly then, but, you know, amongst people. Then there was meant to be a, a meeting of the, you know, Northern governors that was meant to be held at a particular hotel. Uh, that didn't hold, you know, and then on their way out, there was people who uh, confronted them. You know, and then, you know, threw stones, uh, booed them, you know, called them names and all of that. And that was really the last straw that broke the camel's back back then. Um, it eventually led to what we now call the Kano riot of 1953. It broke out, of course, in the Asian city of Kano, located, of course, in northern Nigeria. The nature of the riot really was clashes between northerners who were opposed to Nigeria's independence and um, the southerners who, who of course, um, supported the immediate independence for Nigeria back then. It was, it was a very, very, you know, dicey situation. Um, but unfortunately, and, you know, it's one thing that they, they always, um, you know, point out that the, the riots, you know, mostly centered around the Sabungari area of Kano State, which is a, an area filled with traders. Um, and unfortunately, even if it was meant to be a um, um, Antony, Antony and Nahoro um, and, uh, of course, um, Akintola, you know, who, some, who were basically the ones who, Samuel Akintola, who chaired the, you know, other side or the other half of the movement, um, the victims of the riot, you know, were mostly Igbos. You know, and this is, you know, one of the, you know, points that people would always reach out to say, you know, that um, the civil war, you know, and the, the crisis really between the Igbos and Nigeria um, started way before the Nigerian civil war started, you know, and that there was, there was already that little bit of friction, little bit of, you know, of, um, you know, a crisis between both sides, if, you know, as early as 1953. But it was on this day that the Kano riot, you know, started and led to the death of 46 people um, about 200, you know, plus were injured. And it was mostly, of course, the Igbo traders and, of course, uh, some of the northerners who were casualties of the Kano riot. Really, Sergei, you have um, said it all, broke down the history of that situation, you know, as it should. The Kano riots just reminds us, and all the whole situation um, in, in, in the 1950s reminds us of what's happening today, or what's happening today reminds us of the past, because we know how the south and the northern part of, parts of Nigeria had different ideologies regarding independence, how the south, the south wanted independence. You know, Anthony yeah. Anahora of the Action Group moved the motion for independence in 1954, saying that, or 1953, saying that Nigeria should, should be looking towards attaining self-independence or self-rule by 1956, you know, but the northern leaders were opposed to that, you know. Um, we know how uh, Madibello said, you know, instead of 1956, changing, attempting to change the bill to as, uh, as possible or as, uh, obtain, as soon as possible rather than a definite time frame. Yes. You know. Then, like you mentioned, when um, Samuel Akintola went from the south to the north to canvass and uh, campaign for self-rule, we saw what happened, how he you know, a mob gathered at the hotel where the meeting was supposed to take place to say, you know, trying to basically change the mind of the North towards yeah. self-rule, to say, let's be self-independent, but the Northerners were, you know, stuck with, they were against it basically, you know, calling on the British to help them, that they still wanted, you know, continue the process of, you know, colonialism and all of that. That caused that riots, like you mentioned, about 40 something people died, 46. over 200 people injured, you know, then that, that led to what we know as federalism today, because after that whole incident, you know, the loss of lives, how 
you know, some parts of government were saying this was an ethnic clash, others were saying no, this was essentially between Northerners and Southerners regarding the whole issue with self-independence. You know, they were saying, let each state, after the whole um, kind of rights of 1953, let each state become autonomous, let them control their own regions. And funny enough, when you look at the whole um, issue of restructuring today, that's basically what they're saying. Let all regions become autonomous. Let them control their own resources. So it's almost like a reenactment of history. Absolutely. And uh, still the whole issue, not South Divide. We know what happened yeah. in t on Tuesday in Asaba. Southern governors taking a stand on a particular thing. Northern governors are yet to say something, you know, with one voice. But we know Mietiala has reacted. So there's just lots of division, South and North, right from time. Yeah. Can we ever, you know, just bridge the divide and reach peace. Well, um, to Nicola Wale made, you know, some statements earlier, you know, talking about uh, certain things that also need to be done and, you know, being, being able to accept that Nigeria is a secular, you know, state and, you know, the northern states need to understand, you know, the, you know, the, that perspective and, you know, it's, it's that level of acceptance, you know, that we, you know, we have struggled with for a very, very long time. And until we are able to fully accept each other and accept, you know, our differences, accept our peculiarities, um, and understand that we are one country that has all these different values here mm -hmm. and there and different, you know, um, um, aspirations, it's, you know, we'll continue to have this, you know, bits of crisis here and there. It, it, you know, there's people who also say, well, you know, they don't believe and they don't agree with this whole, um, you know, there's beauty in our, in our diversity, you know, mostly because of how diverse and, you know, far-reaching level of diversity we're talking about on some parts of the country. But we need to do better, you know, with uniting. We need to do better with understanding each other and tolerating each other yeah. um, as a country. And, and, you know, discuss thoughts that we've had for, I mean, since that, the 1950s, you know, Northerners are afraid then that if we be, have, you know, have self-independence, that the South, South was going to dominate them. And we're having fears now, the South thinking, you know, it's just been Northern leaders, the North wants to dominate us, so they yeah. want a Southern leader. So we need to actually dispel these fears, these inferiority complexes, so to speak, yeah. and just move forward as one united Nigeria. Absolutely. So um, also today in history, May 17th, but the year 1954, there was a landmark ruling in the United States that basically set in motion a, a chain of reaction regarding a civil rights movement and racism in, in America. So the United States Supreme Court on this day handed uh, a ruling that racial segregation in public schools should definitely end. This decision, even though it says here that it brought an end you know, to federal tolerance of racial segregation, we see that years and years later, it, that equality wasn't there. Um, you can see a picture on your screen here. It, it's a picture of Linda Brown. She's a young American girl who had been denied admission to an elementary school because of her skin color. So she lived in a part of town where, you know, schools that she, she wanted to attend a highbrow school close, closer to her. All the schools that she was allowed to attend because she was black was far from her home. And her parents decided this, basically, this school was too far for a young girl to commute day, at, you know, morning and night. And... There was a school in, you know, closer to them. It was an all-white school. But her parents sued, and not just her parents, it was a collection of five different cases you know, that the Supreme Court had, had collectively under the name Brown versus the state. You know? So that, um, in the case, the courts ruled, the judge name is, is Warren. He ruled, quote, he says, to separate them, and by then here he means children in grade and high schools, to separate them from others of similar age and qualification solely because of their race generates a feeling of inferiority as to their status in community that may affect their hearts and minds in a way unlikely to ever be done. So um, Judge Warren here ruled that segregation in public schools uh, should end and that school basically this ended a, 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 a rule that had been in practice in the U.S. for about 60 years. It was called the separate but, but equal rule, saying that basically schools should be different. Black people should attend black schools, white people should attend white schools. But when Linda Brown and her family and four other you know, students put together this case, you know, this ruling um, was, the, was the result, basically, uh, Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. Basically, ended decades of, uh, of racial segregation in public schools in America. Yep. Um, fortunately, they didn't completely end racism. It um, didn't. You know, and in 2020, we still, of course, are seeing, you know, some elements of uh, racial segregation, some elements of... Uh, 
of um, unfairness, you know, towards, you know, race in, in the United States, even in South Africa and, you know, many other countries across mm. the world. Um, it's a sad, you know, aspect of, you know, of, um, you know, our lives and, you know, for what our truth is really um, in, in the world today. But anyway, um, 1953 and 1954, those are our dates for today in history, 17th of May. Stay with us. We're moving into our first major conversation for today, which comes up next. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, with uh, the National Secretary of uh, Meiti Alakatu Breeders Association, Mr. Baba Usman. And it's uh, in reaction to the Southern Governors and their resolutions. We'll get right into it after the short break. <laughs> 